and there was so much uh, enthusiasm on both sides to try to find a way of making things easy, quick, and, and, and reproducible. And that ended in inappropriate results. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the Rhino Pasty Podcast Season 3. I'm really excited about this. I've been mulling over doing a third season. And uh, I think it's necessary. It's necessary to approach what I think is in terms of coming back to the basics and hybrid Rhino Pasty. How are we going to incorporate the wave of preservation with structural Rhino Pasty, with Indonesian Rhino Pasty? I'm delighted to be in Brussels today at the European Rhino Plastic Course and as my first guest on the Rhino Plastic Course this season, I couldn't think of someone who is better positioned to talk about this than Professor Enrico Rapati. So, Prof. Enrico, thank you so much and for today. Okay. It's a pleasure. So, Prof, um, yeah, there's a lot to chat about. How are you doing? Going well. Yeah? Yes. Working so hard and I've worked in hard and Working very hard on uh, interesting cases and thinking a lot and just loving what we do. Sorry for my voice, it's low because I, you know, I just come from the mind. Air yeah, conditioning room. So, so tell both, how do you manage to keep a balance between the amount of academics you're doing, the amount of work you're doing, the amount of conferences, etc.? Because this podcast is listened to in like 70 countries around. And so many people look up to you that my one question is, where do you get your energy from to carry on doing what you do? It's a gay, loving what you do. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You and trying to cut some corners of it. Yeah. Uh, trying to avoid unnecessary times of your of your point to be life. Then I get in to some extent. I have a very good assistant from just who's been here a long time. Yeah. I've one fellow from my fellow legal fellowship. I have two residents, and I, it's, it's, it's kind of useful guess and gain, I guess. They're deriving surely something, and I rely on them for some portions of the work which are less, in which they can be involved a little bit less directly. Yeah. So a reasonable way, way of delegating some items. Yeah. It's not easy to find a balance. It's not easy to find a balance. Of course, that it's a family issue. It's a, Personal health issue. Yeah. I like to exercise when I can. I can yeah. and other things. It's a delicate, it's a delicate equilibrium. And you know, yeah. if you're also like being pretty react and stuff. Still, I think I can make it. Probably the biggest uh, decision regarding this where it was when I left my totally my hospital responsibilities, which were becoming a little bit um, taking too much of. So, Prof, before we come into this uh, the kind of theme for the season, is a little glimpse of how, tell, tell us, how did you end up where you're on to a history of where you started, you specialized in, et cetera? It's funny because I was talking to this with my wife just before leaving for well, yeah. training. Sometimes I think I, will, I led a double life, two separate lives. So, I've always been attracted by the surgical field. Yes. And plastic surgery is what I just got, just got in love with. Um, but I was in the UK very every year for three months. And so when I was a medical student, I went around uh, surgical departments, medical departments, and just I saw it. I was done for major surgery. Yes. Uh, Starting with orthopedics, then found plastics, and then that was kind of my, my thing. So following that, I was very lucky. I went to the States. I went to San Long story, and I was there for a long, quite a long time, for four years, three years about that. And uh, I was very fortunate. I got a department in Italy, which is not easy, uh, when I was very young. So I was 37 when I started this. Uh, 39, and I became full chief and 37 acting chief. And so I loved that. And I just loved it. Yeah. Why? Because for them, I'm not an artist, for instance. I maybe I should be, but I never found the time to cultivate this. Yeah. But I love studying. I love developing algorithms. I love physics in school, for yeah. instance. Uh, I love like mathematics as well. 
drawing I never had time to do out of it, yeah. but maybe yeah. I would have liked it. And surgery gave me that shock yes. that general medicine did not yes. give me. I mean, I think that internship in gastroenterology, and I said, I have to go back to just leave mess. Yeah. 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 No, I'm sorry to say, I just did not. None. Did not fight. No, you're not excessively no. enthusiastic. Yeah. You know, up. And surgery was that beautiful interface between the manual dexterity, yes. shaping something from the wrong end, and developing a lovely plan which could be so multifaceted. Yes. So developing that plan and then putting it into practice was one of them. And plastic surgery was the thing. Yes. Fashion surgery. Strong yes. 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 And so from there, I developed, uh, I was lucky, I got to be have this department, and I just loved what I did for two years, 21 years. Wow. During that time, progressively, I did time with everything, and I did the uh, whole extremity, alcohol, some free flash, pressure sores, up of hand. Yeah. Not many burns, because it's kind of something I yeah. shied away with, and not much congenital. But... Uh, at some point, face became more and more interesting mm -hmm. because of the fitness. Yes. I like doing micro and then like these little anastomosis things. I, I was faking with my noobs. I was trying to train them four point five to do some head and neck stuff. Even and and then nose came to follow. Yeah. And the way that nose started was that I was trying a meeting on days of reconstruction. Yeah. And then, for some reason, the same thing happened in the States. And somewhere, many people came to find me 10 years ago. And they said, well, now let's start meeting on, on Ryan. If that's still problem combines uh, nasal reconstruction and shape. And then I got progressively just loving it. So we did a lot of flash. We had a big unit doing so many flash for, for the nose, for the face. Had a huge face lock. Big thing. And so from that came the starting point. And then I said, why don't I just learn something from others like in this? Yes. Because I knew not enough about function. So it became less and less specialty oriented. Yeah. And more or less focused on doing doses. Yes. That's when the point happened that can I still work equally well in my department or should I focus? And I had a transition. Wow. So now I'm leading and living my second life. Wow. Which is having left. With some regret, but inevitably by hospitals, yes, yes, yeah, and then just having devoted myself to work over completely over the last seven years and considered it. So it's a kind of essentially loving what you do. Yes. Why do you love it? I think it's just an attraction. Yeah. You find it challenging, you find it rewarding. Teaching next means a lot. Yeah. Every time I teach something, I have a mind in front of me and and I learned, I mean, I learned so much in this ring here running. Yeah. But that it's, I don't know if the listeners know it, but a couple of, the, like two years ago, COVID and this year, we were interviewing a lot of the top overseas guys. And out of everybody, you would, every day I did a program, you'd send me a message and say, Cameron, give me the login details. I want to listen to that message because I was busy operating and saying, How, this is a guy who he, he runs Burgerbot. And yet he's listening and learning. And I think that to me is incredible. But, but and it's so, I was so kind of not attracted by some calls of mine, maybe professors, or they just come for their talk, say hello, uh, make some social, and then leave a meeting. Mm -hmm. Lost them. Mm -hmm. You have to benchmark, not only for the role, Judging your results, but you have to learn from others mm. because minds can be ruined quite a lot. You are losing a tremendous chance if you don't do that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a matter of time, but that portion, I still want to listen to webinars I have recorded last year, yeah. but they want to listen to them because they will learn. Absolutely. Mind has to be after. Yeah. So, Prof, the other thing I wanted to kind of get my head around. So, one of the things I've noticed over all the years of watching is. You don't suffer fools gladly at the same time. You call someone out that's not scientific. Let's just capture what the ref is. So leading on that, there's been a, the way a resurgence of preservation. And we're now sitting in 
kind of a new era in rhinoplasty, where if you haven't wants to start this career, some have confusion, which way to go, blah, blah, blah. I think you are perhaps trying to show the guts, listen, this is the way to do it. So I, I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are on it. Well, it's, uh, it's an old story, but the motto of the last Bergamo team was fine with it. Yes. And the icon was a kind of label within which people were not found. And this preservation, uh, great uh, ways, didn't unfortunately simplify choices yes. and didn't allow people to just go straight away for a more simplified version of life. If they thought they would, then they failed mm -hmm. because it's not easy to understand as well as to practice. As I mentioned today, because I, it's one of my, I've really two things greatly going on in these last years. One is secondary reconstruction of rib, which I just love. And the other one is trying to understand what is good from preservation. Yes. And there's so much good coming from preservation. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the new anatomy, all the work that has been done by Rowling, by, by Peter and by others, and, and the new concepts of what this new anatomy understanding leads of clinical leads to clinical, but at the same time, then it became a market niche. And there was so much uh, enthusiasm on both some to try to find a way of making things easy quick, and, and, and reproducible. And that ended in inappropriate results. Yeah. Without any catering of a nose to somebody's face, you cannot do that. Yeah. And uh, to a number of issues, which were due to lack of time and lack of precision and whatever. So, my current thinking, sorry for me, was my current thinking is I'm trying to blend. I still need to see what I do. So, that's why I'm open my noses. But I treasure so much from the preservation regarding tissue plans, respect or restoration of certain ligaments, and still being structural with my tip, but preservationist. To this element of your dorsum, this dorsum histone yeah. area, which is so difficult yeah. to reconstruct. Yeah. Now, I, I had a lot of issues with Roman's editorial because the word destruction, and I had issues with bodies as well, and then we came to terms. Initially, preservation was, was a real block against block. Yes. Structural preservation, we found there's no reason. We can find a way. One can be purely structural, one can be purely preservationist. And I found this hybrid concept absolutely interesting. Yes. I thought it's great. Time. It's really, I, I think uh, it's going to be a really interesting future for anaplasty over the next few years. Well, handle swims, right? Yes. If I was wise, I would say probably, why am I leaving the non shore to just adventure by stuffing down the overseas? But as I said, I've seen this today. If you're curious, if you study things, then there's value. And currently, I don't regret. I'm, I've taken so many things recently. It's changed the quality of my life. Perfect. That's gratifying. Well, Prof, thanks. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's just that we want to kick off the season with a bang. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, thank you for what you've done for Rhino last year around the world and how. At the big my meeting, what it's done is just, it's really wonderful. Oh, yeah, well, it's, okay. we love sharing. I think sharing is so important. It's easy to see this problem. You are just enthusiastic. You, you, you want to share. You want to teach. You want to learn. You just give this with your heart. It's, it's easy. But that's easy. Like you see. And the RAC, I mean, what a great society. Well, RAC is built that from little thing. Yeah. Heck no, it's, it's offering was a Awesome. Especially in the fellowship. Yeah, it's okay. It's a new program. Yeah. Well, before, thank you so much. And uh, to all the listeners out there, thank you for um, listening. And guys, we really hope that you can enjoy season three of the Rhino Blaster podcast. It's going to be a uh, crack. <laughs>